Does your art style work for the picture book market? Let's find out. Hello everyone. Welcome to our business with Ness. I'm Ness and I'm a professional illustrator. We're right in the middle of my special promotion for my picture book portfolio prompt 10 day course. So today again, we're talking about picture book illustration. One question that I get asked all the time, I think every week I receive emails and DMs like this, is someone telling me, hey, here's some of my art. Do you think that this would work for the picture book market? And my answer is often very similar. It's always the same answer over and over again. So I thought, let's make a video and settle this question once and for all. Without further ado, please like, comment, subscribe, hit that little bell for notification, and let's just get started. So how do you know if your style works for picture book? A lot of the time, my answer is yes, your art style can work for picture books, but because style actually isn't the main factor for deciding if your artwork is going to work for that market or not. There really is a great variety of different artwork in the picture book market and almost any art style can work. What's a lot more important than style is if you're drawing the right topics or not. So for example, if you're drawing a scene of Monday morning in a corporate office, everyone with their coffee, attending their morning meeting, this is not a topic for picture book illustration. It's just not a topic that appeals to children and it's probably a topic that we're never ever going to see on a picture book that's actually on the shelf at the bookstore. But if you were to draw children going to school on a Monday morning, same style and everything, but suddenly Yes, this could work for picture book illustration. Okay, so topic is a big one, but what else makes your work suitable for picture book illustration or not? A big one is to focus on storytelling. Picture book illustration is all about telling that story. But a lot of beginners sometimes don't realize that. We get into picture books because we want to draw cute stuff. We forget that it's all about actually telling a story. And if it's your first time realizing that right now, don't feel too bad about it. It's completely normal. After all, you know, I started studying animation back in the day because I wanted to draw. And it's only after I was in the program that I realized that animation is about cinema. So <laughs> don't feel bad at all. Just realize that in picture book, all of the artwork has to serve the manuscript. So if you draw artwork that is very decorative or abstract or scientific, for example, then there's no element of story in there. And so it might not be a good fit. If it doesn't contain a story inside your illustration, it's still probably very beautiful and it could work very well for other markets. But if there's not a story in there, that's not picture book illustration. Same thing if you draw just backgrounds or just objects, for instance. This is more concept art or visual development, not picture book illustration. For your illustrations to focus on story, there must be characters in them, but not just any characters, characters that are doing things and experiencing emotions. So to summarize, if you focus on stories, on characters, on emotions, and on topics that appeal to children, then yes, your art style works for picture book illustration. The second thing I want to cover is variety. There is a large variety of different art styles in the picture book market because it takes a little bit of everything. Everyone has different tastes. Here are some examples of common styles used in the picture book market. The first style is vector and it's used very often in board books or baby books such as this one right here. This is a very cute book with a little alligator and it's extremely simple vector style. I have another example right here. This is one of my own. <laughs> this is my do not give up book and it's vector with a little bit of texture, but still, you know, very, very simple vector style. Another common style is soft digital painting. So this is an example right here. So this is a digital style that has some shading to it. Here's another page, for example. Then we have the more realistic styles. For example, in this little Sherlock Holmes book, this one has illustrations that are a lot more realistic, a lot more painterly, a little bit more dark and gritty. And you can tell because there's more text that so it's actually meant for an audience that's a little bit older. Then you have line art style that is also very, very common. This is an example right here. This is a very simple cartoony style that uses line art to outline all the characters and elements. Here's another page. I also have this book here. This is a comic book or graphic novel that is meant for kids. 
and it's so so beautiful it's a mix of line art and soft digital painting this is absolutely gorgeous work this is by the illustrator Aurélie Néret and then we even have traditional art styles you don't have to use digital you can use watercolor you can use pastels you can use coloring pencils in this book which is a compilation of multiple different stories there's a mix of digital and watercolor illustrations you can see for example this little guy right here is all done in watercolor and it works perfectly well in this book i also love the work of illustrator Geneviève Godbout. she works with dry pastel which creates an absolutely ethereal and magical art style. I often hear from aspiring illustrators, oh I would love to illustrate picture books but first I have to learn digital. No you don't! You can work in traditional media in picture books and in fact it can even make your work stand out compared to the competition. As you can see there are many different kinds of styles that are used and there are even more that I didn't talk about today so many possibilities. Even though there are many different styles represented, however, we can still see trends emerge from that. Trends are kind of like a pattern that we notice, things that tend to pop up more often across multiple publishers and different books because it's something that's quite popular at the moment. Some trends that we have noticed in last several years are, first of all, the wonky and naive aesthetic, with digital drawing, it's very easy to create a perfect circle or a perfect square. But with this style, we're going away from the extreme perfection of digital. And we try to capture the charm and crookedness that can be seen in children's drawing, for example. And this is why this type of art style works so great with picture book illustration, because it's something that maybe our audience, children, can relate to as well. This kind of art style is pretty naive and it really is beautiful. It's something that has been persistent in trends for five plus years now. We also see another trend. It's a loose and sketchy sort of styles. It's very well represented by one of my favorite illustrator, Leanne Hatch. Illustrations that looks like they are done very, very quickly. We can see the grain. It is sketchy. We can see a lot of texture. Another trend that we notice is clean, white backgrounds. Not necessarily on every page, Page, but it could be a page once in a while inside of a book where there are other backgrounds but a few pages sometimes where we can see just the characters with some props maybe on a super minimalistic background this is an aesthetic that is very popular for again the last I want to say four or five years it's very minimalistic and airy and it just feels good this actually pairs very well with the sketchy and loose style because the sketchier you are most of the time, the cleaner you have to be in your presentation so that it doesn't look like it's just dirty. <laughs> While it's good to be aware of trends, it doesn't mean that you have to jump on every single trend. For example, my picture book illustration style is vector. It doesn't really fit well with any of the trends that I just discussed. And still, I was very successful in picture book illustration. And that's because there are two types of trends that you can see. There are long-term trends and there are short-term trends. The short-term trends can stick around from anywhere from, you know, a year to five years, and they come and go. And these are not as important to stick to. You can try to incorporate them if you like them and you want to try them out, but you don't have to change your whole style just for that. However, the longer trends are trends that will stick around for 10 years or more. And those are quite important to stick to. Otherwise, your books are going to look like they don't fit like it, they're in the wrong decade or like they're outdated. The biggest issues here are often with fonts or with layouts or with color combinations. So having a little bit of a retro look can be okay as long as you modernize those things, you should be fine. It's a tricky line to walk to make sure that your style fits with current trends but also stands out. Another issue that you might have or presentation. Your artwork must be nicely scanned and clean. It must look very professional. So especially if your style is traditional or a little bit sketchy, put some extra care in the presentation to just make sure that your work does not look amateur. Take some time to analyze your style. Does it look sketchy or does it just look dirty? And lastly, you might struggle if you're targeting the wrong audience with your style. Because picture books is a broad market and you have books all the way from board books for toddlers to books like these that are for middle graders. And you can see plainly here different styles for different audience. I don't think this book would work quite as well 
with this style, don't you think? Or vice versa. I have a cute vector style, so I used to get a lot of work in board books. But at the beginning of my career, I was trying to get 32 page books for older kids with this style. And I was having a lot of trouble. I couldn't understand. I was like, my work is nice. Why am I getting no work at all? And that's because I was targeting the wrong audience. As soon as I started focusing on books for a younger audience, then it started to click a lot better. So find your match and target projects that fit very well with your art style. This is an issue that I see all the time. I have a student in mind who is having a lot of trouble getting their ideal picture books illustration because they were working in vector like me, but they were aiming for older audience. They have now adapted their style to a soft digital style. And I think it's going to work a lot better for them. And I don't think it's because there was anything wrong with their style to begin with. It just wasn't a good fit for the product they wanted to create. So you either adapt your style for the audience that you want to work for, or you change your audience depending on your style. Either works. So if you really want to work in picture book, no matter the style that you have, you can because it's a lot more about what you choose to draw than your art style. It's all about what you put in that portfolio. And if you'd like some help to put together a great portfolio to impress art directors, I have just a thing to help you. I have compiled all of my knowledge and experience working in picture book into a course that my students have been raving about. It's called the picture books portfolio prompt 10 day course. And just this week it's on sale for just $37 and no lie, you will be shocked everything that you get inside this course for that price. I went all out with 10 video lessons hacked with industry secrets, over 50 video critiques. So you can see my tips in action on real student work and 30 drawing prompts created specifically to help bring out all the skills that are necessary to impress art directors in this course learn how to make better picture book pages and put together a portfolio that truly stands out. But hurry up, this offer expires in just a few days. You have until Sunday, August 13th to get this course for $37 and then the price goes up. So don't miss out on this opportunity. Go in the description below for the link and snatch up this course at this amazing price. I hope to see you there so we can work on your portfolio together. But until then, that's it for me today. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, then don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to help our small channel grow. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.